Okay, these are the uh, ingredients for the dial indicator holder. The first one from Dillon is the large powder die. It's about twice the cost of the standard powder die. Main difference is the bore down through it is larger. And I wanted that to give me a little more leeway for the button that will be on the end of the dial indicator. I wanted to use the biggest button I could to cover all the calibers I'll be running through here and I didn't want that button rubbing up against the inside so I opted for the more expensive piece. Uh, next key ingredient is this shoulder bolt. Now the rest of these items here are all from McMaster Car. The shoulder bolt comes pre-drilled for um, quarter twenty which just works out perfect for the shoulder bolt I'm using. This is a what they call a precision shoulder bolt as opposed to a standard shoulder bolt and the difference is shoulder is closer to the nominal size than the standard. I started with a standard one but it was just too loose in the swivel clamp. I had to crank down on the thumb nut too much. I didn't like it. So got this. Um, now this only comes in certain uh, uh, sizes um, and this uh, dimension here isn't really a standard size on the, on the powder die. So that was my first dilemma but I just happened to find this tubing that they sell. I had to buy a three foot length of it. Um, but it just happens to fit onto the powder die. It's going to be a light press fit. Um, I'm going to put that on there with this high strength cylindrical part bonding Loctite. Don't plan on taking it apart ever. But that basically makes up the difference between the, the OD on the powder die and the ID on the shoulder bolt. So now I got a good fit between the shoulder bolt and the powder die. Also the, the um, shoulder bolt will be loctited with this here high strength red thread locker. I don't plan on taking it apart um, but before I glue it in there it's just important to decide which hole to use. And I'm going to use this hole here because I want to be able to get to this bolt to make adjustments and I want all these swivel clamps behind the dial indicator so we're going to put the bolt through the swivel clamp Loctite it in place of course I'm going to degrease all this stuff before I Loctite it get it all cleaned up well so I'm going to do that and uh, then I'll come back we'll go on to the next step uh, one other thing yeah, this, this is just a piece of drill rod quarter inch drill rod the length should be long enough to to cover anything I need to run through here at least for the uh, time being. So okay I'll be back in a little bit. Okay I got the whole thing together here. Here's the Dillon extra large powder die with the steel tubing pressed onto it with the lock tight. Here's the rest of it, the split collar. Got the precision shoulder bolt, two swivel clamps, quarter inch drill rod. So that's going to go into my tool head. The split collar, collar will go onto the die. Like that. It's a beautiful fit. I'll lock that down once it's on the press. And my dial indicator of course will go there. So that's the that's the part all together there. Um, let me show you the dial indicator. That's the dial indicator I I chose. Um, I'm not an expert on these things, but I chose this one because it is shockproof. I don't know if you can read that right in the center there. Shockproof, and it has a full jeweled. Uh, mechanism inside. It's basically it's made for uh, repetitive use uh, in a production environment. Uh, again I'm not an expert on these, maybe there's a better one. This one has uh, a range of uh, 50 thousandths of an inch. Every revolution is 10 thousandths of an inch. Each increment is one ten thousandth of an inch. 
So that's one thousand, uh, one thousandth of an inch, two thousandths of an inch. One revolution is ten thousandths. Again, this will go five revolutions. On this, I'm going to put a button on the end. This piece here, that's going to come down and contact the rim of the case. These are extensions, so I have a two inch and one inch. So depending on the length of the case that I'm measuring, I can add or remove these things. And then, of course, this will go into the dial indicator after I put it into the holder. This has got to go into the holder first, like that. And then this will get inserted. I'll make another video on actually setting this thing up.